In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. I welcome you all here today as we gather to celebrate Seamus's funeral mass. It's a day of sorrow for us and sadness as we have to say farewell to Seamus, but it's also a day on which we can give thanks to God for the blessing that he was for so many people. On behalf of all the people of the parish, I offer deepest sympathies to all those who will miss him, and especially to his wife, Kathleen, his children, Fergal, Niall, Lorraine, Emer, and Barry. We offer our sympathies to all the family members who cannot be with us today but are joining us over the live stream. In particular, Seamus's granddaughter, Adele, his grandson-in-law, Connor, and his great-grandchildren, Sophie and Liam, who are joining with us from Australia. And also we welcome Seamus's relatives who are viewing from the United Kingdom and from various other parts of the world. We gather in prayer here in the church with all his grandchildren and great-grandchildren, sons-in-law and daughters-in-law, brothers-in-law, sisters-in-law, nephews, nieces, friends and neighbours. And we pray that the Lord will be your consolation at this time of loss. Over the past few days, we've been going over the richness of our memories of Seamus and the joy that he brought to so many people's lives. And for a few moments now as we begin our Mass, maybe I'd like to just take a few moments to think of a moment that was special to you, an encounter that you had, a time spent together, words that were spoken, laughter that was shared. And as we gather our memories, we're also going to bring to the sanctuary some symbols of Seamus and some of the things that he loved. So, first of all, Jack is going to bring up a racing book from the Laytown Races and a GAA match programme representing Seamus's love of sport, especially Gaelic football, golf and racing. So we'd like to bring them out now just and give them to the altar service. And Lily then is going to bring up a pot plant. Seamus had a love and passion for gardening and always had the place looking splendid. Now Kira is going to bring up a photograph representing Seamus's love for family. And finally, Owen is bringing up Seamus's bowling trophy. And this represents Seamus's participation in bowling, which he enjoyed right up until his recent illness. So we bring all these memories and all our own particular memories before the Lord as we present Seamus to him today. There he'll go to enjoy in eternal life and live with all those who have gone before us in faith, especially his parents, James and Stella, and his brother and sisters, Maureen, John and Stella, and of course, Irene. There they will enjoy eternal life together. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who has set a limit to this present life, so as to open up an entry into eternity, we humbly beseech you that by the grace of your mercy, 
you may command the name of your servant Seamus to be inscribed in the book of life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Now we're going to listen to our readings from the scriptures. So we have the first reading first and then after the psalm, we'll have the second. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name, you are mine. Should you pass through the sea, I will be with you, or through the rivers, they will not swallow you up. Should you walk through fire, you will not be scorched, and the flames will not burn you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. This is the word of the Lord. Second reading, a reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. I have fought the good fight to the end. As for me, my life is already being poured away as a libation, and the time has come for me to depart. I have fought the good fight to the end. I have run the race to the finish. I have kept the faith. 
All there is to come for me now is the crown of uprightness, which the Lord, the upright judge, will give to me on that day. And not only to me, but to all those who have longed for his appearing. This is the word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus exclaimed, I bless you, Father, Lord of heaven and of earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever and revealing them to mere children. Yes, Father, for that is what it pleased you to do. Everything has been entrusted to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father just as no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labour and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy, and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> when John was building a garage, John Jr. decided that he would play with the bricks and build something of his own. And John Jr. was quite small, but he manhandled the wheelbarrow into position and, one by one, filled the wheelbarrow with the bricks. His father came out to have a look at his son filling the wheelbarrow, and eventually the barrow was full and it was time to move it. Now, while a little boy can lift bricks one by one, he can't shift a wheelbarrow if it's totally full. And so John Jr. tried to lift it. Go on, son, said the father. Use all your strength. And John Jr. tried again, but he couldn't manage and was getting red in the face. Ah, son, said the father, you're not using all your strength. I am, I am, said the little boy, with tears coming to his face. Ah, but you're not still using all your strength, replied the father, because you still haven't asked me to help you. I am your strength. Jesus issues an invitation to us in the gospel this morning. He knows that we're not working on full steam without him. Today's gospel passage encourages us not to go it alone, but to trust in the promise that he is always with us. Yes, Jesus is always with us to challenge us, but he also wants us to know that he is there as a comforter too. He knows the difficulties under which we labour. He knows the temptations to which we are prone. He knows the darkness of death and suffering. But he has conquered death and he has revealed the new life of the resurrection. As we gather to say farewell to Seamus today, we take comfort in the Lord's promises. Life for Seamus continues in eternity, and the Lord asks us to trust him. As we say farewell to Seamus today, we're saying farewell to someone who did trust in the Lord, and to receive great strength from God throughout his life. He evidenced that in so many ways throughout his life, and example lends us courage too. 
knowing that we too can face life in the comfort that God is never far away from us. Seamus celebrated his 90th birthday recently, having been born on the 26th of January 1933. That life began in Mornington, where he was born to James and Stella Lynch, the eldest of four children. He was educated in Dunna Kearney National School. And for 45 years, Seamus worked for Irish Rail, or CIE, Chorus Umper Aaron, as it was when he started. He began his work on the 30th of May, 1949, and all of his life was spent in this working area, in Laytown, Mosney, and Drogheda, and of course it was ideal for him. Seamus met Kathleen in 1953, and the two were married in 1958. They originally settled in Minnistown following their marriage, and they had six children whom they loved and cherished. It was at Minnistown that he developed his love of gardening, where there was a large plot of land beside the house. He was so content looking on the fruits of his sowing and his harvest, watching everything grow, having tended and watered all the plants. His flower beds were spectacular. 21 years after settling in Minnistown, he brought all those skills to Slee Oltham when they moved there 21 years later. When Jesus in the Gospel says that he wishes us to have life and to have life to the full, he doesn't mean that life will always be easy or that we should live in a careless way. But he does mean that we should enjoy the blessings that we receive and share them with others. And Seamus certainly did that. As we recalled in the symbols that we brought to the table here at the beginning of Mass, Seamus had a lifelong interest in sport. He was an avid follower of Mead GAA, and along with his friends Mickey and Michael, he travelled the country following them. He was lucky enough to witness Mead winning seven All-Ireland titles, something we might only dream about today, but who knows. Golf was another interest, and Seamus was a member of golf at the, the Leighton and Bettystown Golf Club for 47 years. He enjoyed many games of golf on the links, and through this made many lifelong friends. And even when he wasn't able to play anymore, he always loved to hear the news from the club. When Lorraine came to visit him, he'd always ask her how she was playing too. He had a great interest. One of his other passions was horse racing. He loved attending the meetings both in Ireland and in the UK. And Deemer and Lorraine were telling me that he even managed to fit in a race meeting in Kempton when he was on honeymoon with Kathleen. I don't think Kathleen minded. She knew that she had already backed a winner in Seamus. And indeed, they were so happy together all their lives, marking 64 wonderful years of marriage. Together, they loved to travel, enjoying many overseas trips together, to Australia, to New York, to San Francisco, as far away as Hawaii, to name just a few. And they learned a lot on their travels and experienced so many sights and cultures. But Laytown was always home, and they were so happy here together, involved in so many aspects of community life, and the school and the church, and raising their family with the best of example and morals. Seamus, of course, was very much aware of the challenges that come the way of so many people in life, and the ways in which he saw so many people's lives being ruined by the abuse of alcohol led him to keep good the promise that he made to abstain from alcohol well beyond the pledge he took as a young boy. He saw him becoming a lifelong pioneer who prayed each day for those who suffered from alcohol abuse and for their families, and he wore that pin proudly. He was a man of deep faith, a faith that was called on when in 1991 his beloved daughter Irene passed away. He was such a strength to the whole family at that time, trusting that God does not abandon us at times of trial and trouble. I'm sure the words of our first reading from Isaiah today held great meaning for him. Should you pass through the sea, I will be with you, or through the rivers, they will not swallow you up. Should you walk through fire, you will not be scorched, 
and the flames will not burn you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. We all know that it's not always easy to see light in times of darkness. But Seamus, along with Kathleen, provided the light that was needed and ensured that every care would be given to Irene's children, Celine, Idel, and Alan, something for which they will be eternally grateful. Seamus wanted all his family to be the best that they could be, and he took great delight in all the family achievements, no matter how small. And he was very proud of his children, grandchildren, and most recently his great-grandchildren, with whom he enjoyed spending so much time. He really enjoyed all the family occasions, when everyone would be together, enjoying their company, catching up on everyone, hearing all the news, and maybe giving a bit of occasional advice too. And then when the dancing would begin, he was always the first out to dance. He certainly lived life to the full. But family really was the most important thing for him. Kathleen and the generations of children who surrounded him. Although he was also chuffed with his own achievements, like winning his bowling trophy. Even if the horses didn't always come home, Seamus' efforts and skills paid off. He enjoyed the bowling so much since his retirement, making new friends, and sharing in the fun. Seamus enjoyed a happy and healthy life, and even when illness took hold of him just over four years ago, he remained content and peaceful, enjoying the exceptional care of the nurses and staff in St Ursula's. We have so much for which to be thankful today. Seamus, in his life and example, has taught us to value what is important and to trust that we don't journey alone. We have each other and we have God. Today Seamus reaches the end of his time on earth. The time has come for him to depart. He has fought the good fight to the end. He has run the race to the finish. He has kept the faith. And there is to come for Seamus now the crown of uprightness, which the Lord, the upright judge, will give to him today. Today we ask the Lord to reward Seamus for all his goodness to us and to lead him safely to his eternal home. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. Let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. And I invite you all to stand now as we have the prayers of the faithful and those who are doing the prayers can come forward now. faithful. Let us pray for Seamus. In, in baptism he died with Christ. May he now share in the fullness of, res, of his resurrection. Lord hear us. We pray for all people we have loved who have departed this life, especially Seamus' daughter Irene. May they enjoy the light of heaven and the company, company of saints. Lord hear us. We pray for those who care for the sick and the dying, especially the management, nurses, and care staff of St. Ursula's Nursing Home, who cared so kindly for Grandad during the last three years. May God bless them in their work. Lord, hear us. We pray for, we pray for all those who mourn Seamus' death, in his, his sorrowing family, relatives, and friends, we pray that they might, may fa find strength and comfort in their Christian faith and in the love and support of the community. Lord, hear us. Hear all these prayers that we place before you today on the day in which we honour Seamus' life and commend him to your glory. 
We ask these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Please be seated now as our gifts of bread and wine are brought to the altar and Loretto and Lynn are going to bring forward the gifts. on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant Seamus may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, <clears throat> he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mm. 
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Tom, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Remember your servant Seamus, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, <clears throat> we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your servant Seamus, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Seamus, and now we come to the last farewell. There's sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Seamus again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation may disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. And therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ.
response to the song of farewell is receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God come to his aid, hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you take you to himself, may angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord and let perpetual light shine upon him. Into your hands, Father of mercies, <clears throat> we commend our brother Seamus in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for all the blessings which you bestowed upon Seamus in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our brother Seamus forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And in peace now let us take our brother to his place of rest. Breathe. 